Today we are going to talk about how Bitcoin is, going, is, is becoming more and more useful. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, present you uh, Gilly Yernoshok. Almost. Almost, Gilly Gershok. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who is a digital nomad and current member of Paper Hub, which is a co-working space in Paralnipolis. And recently, about six months ago, or maybe longer, she switched everything into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And she will talk about why she did it and what is her experience. So, Julie, uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Thanks for the love, you guys. Thanks for the introduction. Thank you, Parallelipolis. This is an awesome place. I'm so happy to be here. I had no idea this place existed, and for me, this was a, like a proper validation of the topic that I'm going to talk about. So it's kind of a, it's a nice closed circle. So a um, little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to be talking for, I think, no more than 20 minutes, and then we might do some Q&A or workshop some ideas. Up to you guys. Um, I'm going to be talking in hopefully in this space, but if I start going too fast, if you don't mind, someone in the audience just go, just do this for me, and I'll, and I'll know to slow down because I'm excited, I'm nervous, and when I'm nervous, I talk fast. So, yeah. Yeah. Are questions allowed during the talk? I'm sorry? If questions are allowed. Um, questions are allowed, just let me finish a sentence, because if I see a hand raised in the middle of a sentence, I lose my trail of thought, unless you want me to lose my trail of thought and then just go like, you know, do whatever you want. Yeah, and please, if you have a question, please uh, wait for the microphone because we are streaming so that everybody here and on the stream can hear you. Thank you. This is last interruption. What the man said. Um, <laughs> so um, I was invited to talk about uh, how I deal with Bitcoin, I think. And I figured that for me to talk about that, wait, was I done with the housekeeping? I wasn't done with the housekeeping. Um, so 20 or so minutes, slow me down if I'm talking too fast. Uh, for those of you watching from home <laughs> or from your laptops, whatever, there might be some profanity. So if there's children with you, that's up to you. Um, just figured I'll say that because I don't watch my mouth when I talk. And that's just how it is. Now, don't expect profanity. I'm not promising that. Anyway, um, so I was asked to talk about what I do with Bitcoin. And for me to talk about that, I figured I have to give you some context about who I am and where I come from. So um, I, come, I come from a country. I was born in a country that no longer exists. I'm originally from the former USSR. So basically, I'm a child of immigrants who had to leave everything, take whatever possessions they had, and migrate without any actual currency, just possessions, into a whole new country. So in a very early age, I guess I've experienced this whole idea of transition, of change, of kind of, 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 of this location. Um, and that was, that was... The idea of value and exchange was very strongly kind of um, present in my childhood and around. And then fast forward um, almost 20 years, in my early 20s, I decided to um, take a big trip around the world because in my early 20s, I thought that if I don't do it now, I'm going to get old and I'm never going to do that again. Um, so I took that trip. It actually started from Prague. Um, and that was 2008 when just everything around collapsed and there was suddenly no jobs. There was all discussion of like economy collapsing. There was a lot of conversations about, you know, what it means to deal with currency, the, the power of the dollar, how that affected world economy. Um, and that was very much present around. So the reason I'm giving you this entire context is, be is just to express how my relationship with currency is in general. So to me, it's a fleeting topic. It goes up and down. Sometimes it just goes up in smoke and you never really know. And, um, and that's why I guess it was really easy for me to accept Bitcoin as a currency. Uh, I know there's still a lot of debate as to whether it's um, 
um, if you hold on to it as a currency with hopes that it will become kind of a more mainstream currency or you more look at it as a commodity that you just invest in and sell and make other kind of money on. I sort of, I decided that I'm going to use it as currency because I'm not a financial investor. I don't have any experience in finances. Um, I've never been able to hold a savings account. Um, and my entire life, I've been moving from one bank account to another and just kind of living from salary to salary. Um, so uh, where was I going with this? Right, Bitcoin currency. So uh, a few years ago, I was asked if I would take payment in Bitcoin. I heard about it before. The first, I, the first time I heard about it was... Um, I think it was an episode of The Good Wife. Um, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, thank you, thank you for the laughs. You're making me feel better. I'm just going to focus on you because you're laughing. Um, so <laughs> there was this, uh, um, uh, popular, t for anyone who hasn't heard the, about The Good Wife, you don't have to, it's ended, although too bad because it was really awesome, but there was like one episode and they basically gave the story of Bitcoin, like who is Mr. Bitcoin and like the whole episode they were trying to find out who this, who the person who invented Bitcoin is and like there, there was an investigation and she was interviewing people and she was like, maybe it's a group of people, maybe it's one person, nobody really knows. And, and at the end of the episode, um, Alicia, the main character there, she's like meeting with someone and that's the wrap up of the episode. And she says, I just went online and I bought one Bitcoin. And just for curiosity, I, uh, I went online and I wanted to check how much Bitcoin cost when this fictional character had bought it. So this was 2012, I think. I did this check before I came here and then I forgot, but I think it was like a hundred dollars, right? So uh, Alicia is like pretty rich right now, uh, fictional or not. Uh, she can buy a little bit more than a few cups of coffee, which is really nice for her. And that's really all I knew about Bitcoin. And my response to the person who asked me was, um, sure, how do I get Bitcoin? And they were like, well, you gotta have a wallet. And I was like, I have a wallet. And he was like, no, you gotta, you know, <laughs> go online and like figure it out. And I went online and I Googled what's Bitcoin, what's a Bitcoin wallet. And I did the basic reading and I was like, okay, well, I figured it out. I installed the wallet. I got the payment. I kept it and I completely forgot about it. Uh, went on with my life, um, salary to salary, thing to thing. And then one day, I decided to check the value. Why did I do that? I think I was switching phones. I think I had to like reinstall my phone or switch things. And I was like, let me look into this Bitcoin thing that I had there. Um, and you know, you know what happened, right? It's like, it was like double or triple, like ridiculous amount of money. And I was like, why am I not doing this all the time? And I mean, in the first place, that job was a fluke. I wasn't supposed to get that job. It was kind of on the way. It was a favor for a friend. It was three days of work. And it gave me like a month worth of salary because it was, I don't know, some high-end work. And suddenly I had like three months worth of salary in my phone, which I didn't know what to do with. Um, so then again, I went online and I was like, how do I use Bitcoin? And, um, and I figured out that there's, that there's ways and it's actually not complicated. And little by little, I started asking people if the same question, like, can I pay you in Bitcoin instead of having to convert it to cash or take cash out, take cash in. And, and that's kind of, I mean, that's the frame story. Um, I found, uh, I found platforms online that, uh, through which I convert from Bitcoin to prepaid cards to then chart two physical cards that I have in my wallet that I pay for in stores. Um, I have three cards, one in each major currency, um, dollar, euro, and uh, British pound. I found a couple of platforms that do bank transactions for me. So if I need to send someone payment via bank account, I just, um, I go on this platform. It's called, uh, I use Bitwala, but I know there's more more than just one. Um, so I would go on Bitwala and they generate an invoice for me and I would pay it from my phone and then that would generate a bank transaction. Um, so I started doing that. And then I asked myself, why don't I just get payment in Bitcoin from more clients? Cause I work individually with clients. So I start, so I just went out to my clients and asked like, would you pay me in Bitcoin? So I got all kinds of responses. One of the responses that I got was, 
No, because we don't want Bitcoin on our books because Bitcoin is for criminals and we don't want to be associated with it at all. I'm not going to shame this client by name, but you know who you are. Um, <laughs> Um, and I'm still working with them. I figured out a way for them because what I really wanted to do is to eliminate bank accounts completely. So right now I don't have a bank account. Uh, what I have is a couple of accounts on a couple of platforms that are um, uh, that give me um, that allow third-party transactions. So I would give my when I invoice the clients that still refuse to pay me in Bitcoin, I would send them an invoice with that bank account with instructions to pay to that recipient, and that's and that's an account that generates a card for me, and that's what I use. And again, it's like a regular debit card. I think it's actually, in a way, it's actually better than other cards because I pay zero commission on everything unless there's a, unless there's a, a currency exchange. So. It's a euro account. They deposit in euro. I make uh, payments in euro, and everything is free, uh, which is actually I think I think it's better terms than other bank accounts today. And then for the clients that do pay me, uh, and then a different response that I got was, "Sure, how do I do it?" And then I went through the cycle again, and you know, well, you have to figure out a way to purchase bitcoins, and then I'll invoice you. There are. Um, quite a few platforms out there that create, uh, that hosted invoices. Um, so it means that the person receiving the invoice can use it for their, uh, for their accounting and it doesn't hurt their accounting as long as they're um, purchasing the same amount of bitcoins and they attach that receipt and they needed to do it on their end. But on my end, what I do is I basically generate a payment document for them. It's sent to their email, they click a link, a uh, QR code pops up or which also has an address and then they either scan the QR code or copy the transaction. And I don't know how many of you have experience with like, uh, with Bitcoin payments. The trouble with Bitcoin is that the, the value keeps changing. So that's kind of the tricky part because I can't send an invoice saying like you owe me one Bitcoin, right? Or like you can't, I can't lock uh, an invoice to a specific amount because, because the value may go up and down. So what the hosting platforms do is they lock the rate. Oh my God, I'm sweating like crazy. Um, they lock the rate for somewhere between nine and 15 minutes, depending on the platform. So from the moment you click the link, you have 15 minutes to pay. If you haven't, um, and you still use the address, you're an idiot um, because you just have to go back, click the, click the link again, let another address generate. And the magic in the background is that they associate a temporary address uh, for that, uh, for me as a recipient, and it goes through, uh, it goes first to their address and then from a, their address back to my wallet or to the address that I specify. And then I love that moment because the kind of wallet that I have does a little every time I get money. So I'd be just like walking around and my phone be like, ling, ling. it has like a specific sound or like, I just got paid. Uh, which is really nice. Um, and what, hap what, I've, what I've been realizing that's been happening with these clients is that, and this happened, I had a, a great conversation with a client of mine last month uh, because she had purchased extra because uh, she's in the US and there's apparently a lot of limitations when you purchase Bitcoin in the US. So the whole, somehow the process of going from fiat currency to having Bitcoin is a pain in the ass for Americans. So, um, so to get over that pain in the ass, she purchased double the Bitcoin that she needed to pay me. And by, and we all know what happened, by the end of the month, she paid me once, but then when she came to pay me again, she realized that she has like about two more payments because while she was holding on to that Bitcoin, the value grew and she can keep paying me. So that's a really cool cycle. That's basically how I found this just the best way to introduce people to it. It's just saying, you know, like, don't trust me, trust the numbers, like buy some Bitcoins, give some of them to me <laughs> and then, and then see the rest of the value grow. Um, what have I not covered? Okay, and I've been doing the same things with people that I work with. Like I would approach people and ask, you know, can I pay you in Bitcoin uh, instead, of, uh, instead of cash? And then we'll go through the cycle of like, oh, but what do I do? Well, you have to install a wallet. You have to, you know, and then the obvious question is like, yes, but when do I sell it? And personally, I always say never 
just hold on to it, like don't freak out. It goes up, it goes down, but the general direction is up. But I'm no financial expert, you know. Um, and that's it. And basically, like the last couple of years have been really exciting. I've been, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not like by any any definition rich. Um, I am super lazy, and what Bitcoin has uh, ga has given me, in all honesty, is the possibility to work less. So I work less, I make more, and I have more time to travel, to invent, to create, to participate in projects, and that's really cool because um, it's given me that kind of. Um, basically the freedom to, to do whatever the fuck I want. And it's, uh, it's really, really nice. I just had to get like that profanity in there because I promised it in the beginning. Um, downsides, uh, it still takes a lot of time to do transactions. So um, my difficulty still is finding that balance between saying, okay, I want to use this prepaid card. I don't want to convert too much Bitcoin to fiat currency because it's going to grow in value, but how much should I convert just in time so I don't get stuck in the store, unable to buy that cup of coffee, buy that, you know, sudden, maybe not cup of coffee because I usually have enough for that, but like sometimes I don't have enough for like a flight ticket, you know, or, you know, that's still, that's definitely still a hindrance and I'm still working on that. Um, I'm really excited about a new platform that I haven't tested yet. Um, it's called Zappo with an X. And what they do is they keep a wallet for me and then the transactions go directly from the wallet. So it's instant conversion instead of, um, instead of like first funding, turning it to fiat, keeping it in fiat in the card. Um, also, I found out that most of the platforms that provide prepaid cards actually use the same card issuer. I forgot to check which one it was. It's like, I'll check, I'll check it for you when I take a break, uh, if you want. But it seems like there's a bunch of like, uh, pl um, uh, services or companies out there that are doing the same thing. They're organizing, um, a, um, a contract with a prepaid visa card issuer and then I give them my name and my details. They give my name and my details to that card issuer. Then they give that card to me. And that's pretty much the same cycle that all of these companies do. So companies like uh, CryptoPay, Bitwalla, and so CryptoPay and Bitwalla definitely use the same card issuer. And then you've got the non-crypto companies. Like I know everyone here is talking about Revolut. Uh, these guys sound really cool. I've checked them out. I've ordered my card a few days ago. I haven't tested it yet. It seems like they have a pretty interesting payment structure. What bothers me about them is that they're not cryptocurrency related. So I still, to use that card, have to go through the cycle of like, find, still finding a way to convert my cryptocurrencies into something that would fit their platform, which means I still need to convert it to fiat, and then they operate it from fiat. So my... I guess what I'm hoping for, I'm just waiting for that opportunity for there to be like from wallet to card, direct transaction. Um, the other side of it though, is that on a day like today, when there was a sudden spike uh, in price, in value, I don't wanna say price, um, there was a sudden spike in value today and I just kind of, I have an alert in my phone. It's like, oh yay, we've crossed 4,600, that's really nice. So in that moment, I converted a little bit um, of like the Bitcoin that I have on one of my cards into, into fiat, assuming that it'll probably drop a little bit after this. So I kind of use that opportunity to convert it a little bit. So, so that's kind of the game I play. Um, another interesting platform that I have started using, I mean, I've signed up for it, but I'm only going to start using it next week because it's the end of the month, is a thing called Bitwage. And uh, what they do is they streamline the whole process of payments and invoices. So from what I understand, if I want to invoice someone, um, instead of hosting it and having my client have to, having to buy Bitcoin and click the link and do the whole thing in 15 minutes and the whole stressful thing, is they generate um, like a bank account for me on their system. And then I send an invoice with someone else's bank account and it gets sent 
there, but I'm not sure. So I'm not ready to recommend it. I'm just saying it's out there. Uh, cause I don't know, I don't know what happens in the middle. I don't like what happens in the middle cause there's no, there's no smart contract that does it. There's like some kind of, there's a human behind it or there's a, there's a program behind it, but it's not necessarily something that I'm ready to trust, but it's interesting. It's out there. This whole, like, there's a lot of people working in that space, trying, like taking Bitcoin seriously as a currency, seriously as a payment method. And there's all sorts of interesting things happening. Um, in that space, there's, um, on my way here, I was listening to a podcast talking about, um, a new company called Manitha and they're developing a payment method that would go on websites like eBay or like merchant websites. And they're just, you know, when you have like a drop down or a menu that says, you know, pay by credit card, PayPal, all of that. And you'll have like that option and that option will generate a, um, a QR code, which you can scan and, um, and pay with your cryptos, which is really cool. So this was really short, but this is like where I am now. Um, maybe this is a good time to pause for questions and kind of, and see where we can take it. If we want to go more specific. What do you think, Martin? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? So if you have questions, just raise your hand and I will give you mic. They're so all going to be like, I don't care. I have several. <laughs> so when oh, nobody okay. has questions, I will. Give. Thank you. Uh, you said I, <laughs> you said that uh, one of the problems with your lifestyle is that uh, the transactions take long. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, have you considered or have you used other currencies? I don't know, Litecoin or recent Bitcoin Cash? Um, I haven't, so my wallet of choice is Jax and they've been promising to implement Bitcoin cash forever. Like if you look at their Twitter feed, like every single day, they're like, we're working on it. We're testing it. It's coming. But I like, <laughs> there is, there's a hypothetical Bitcoin cash in my future, but, uh, <laughs> but not just yet. Um, and yes, yes, I have been using Litecoin, but so far, um, I haven't had a chance to really study the alternatives. So I, I am holding on, I'm holding a little bit of Litecoin, um, a little bit of Zcash and a couple of other currencies, but because, um, not enough merchants actually accept those, um, except for, I mean, really the, to be honest, the only place I've ever used Litecoin is right here downstairs in a coffee shop. Like I haven't, I just haven't had the opportunity of a merchant asking me, telling me like, I'll accept Litecoin. Um, that would have been awesome though. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how long it is, uh, from the first moment that you heard about Bitcoin or accepted Bitcoin? How long has it been, mm -hmm. uh, today? Um, I think about two years. Oh, so yeah. it has been two years because, uh, you, uh, talk a lot about how it is, uh, graded the price only rises yeah and uh when you are long in the crypto you know that the price uh, doesn't always rise right uh, uh, i lived through times when the price went uh, down for a year from thousand to uh, 200 mm -hmm. and uh, in that time i think you wouldn't survive so if you can uh comment let this a little bit uh, because this is also the risk of that you will enter in a bad time mm -hmm. and you won't, you w will not have savings. Absolutely. I think, um, I think you're a hundred percent right. Um, I think I, I, and I very knowingly take that risk about my, uh, like on myself. Um, I take that risk knowing that every other person in the world is taking that same risk on themselves by using fiat currency. I mean, guys, seriously, look at the financial crash, look at Venezuela right now, look at, you know, think, uh, this is why I mentioned 2008, you know, it was like, it was hell to use any kind of money, to have any kind of savings to deal with. I, uh, not so much here, but definitely in the US, people were losing their homes, losing their livelihoods. And this is something, and I hate to be, you know, apocalyptic, but this is like, this is the reality we live in. You know, we're, we're using currency, be it Bitcoin or Litecoin or Bitcoin cash. We're using currency that we don't actually have control over. And Bitcoin is, um, subject to fluctuations of the market and fiat currencies are subject to fluctuations of governments and politics and war and, Honestly, I, I prefer to trust technology over government. That's my political attitude. And I know it's not, it's not for everyone, but I think, um, but I think it's really, it's really important to any, 
I think any person, um, Bitcoin or not user, um, should educate themselves about how currency works and how finances work. And you know, if you're, if there happens to be a person in this room or listening to this conversation who is still under the illusion that their money that they that they have in their bank or in their savings are somehow more safe um, than cryptocurrencies, I mean, check yourself. Check yourself and like make sure that you're that you're doing uh, that you're doing everything you're, you can to secure your future. Which means if you don't necessarily want to trust technology, I don't know. Trust oil. Trust coal. Trust gold, silver. There's a lot of things out there that are that are of value that can hold value over time. That isn't necessarily your bank account. I choose Bitcoin because I think it's cool. Yeah, thank you very much, because it's very nice to hear that uh, Bitcoin is not only about the price going up, but uh, mainly about uh, the decentralization, yeah. and people will hold on Bitcoin even if price will go down for some time uh, for the reasons you, you mentioned. So thank you. Sure thing. Okay, so uh, first of all, my question is um, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, it's a huge trend. It's going really up right now. It's true. And whenever there's a trend, there's always a bunch of people that go in and they make shitloads of money. Yeah. So I'm looking right now at this and I'm trying to see what are the money opportunities besides speculating and investing that you see in the space. And also my question is for everyone, really. How do you see uh, people, for example, with tech abilities or with marketing? I'm an internet marketer. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how do you monetize this besides investing? How do you see people making money off of this? Um, how do you monetize the sort of the blockchain opportunities? Just the, the, the trend, like whenever there's a huge trend, there's a lot of opportunity because it's a new growing market. So I'm asking, how do you jump on this opportunity? Um, I think personally, I think you see it. I hope I like, let me, let me try and answer and see, and, and see if, if we're in the same space of understanding. Um, I see that trend happening with the tons of ICOs that are happening right now. And basically, and, and I think that's more the trend than Bitcoin. Cause it's like, you know, Bitcoin has been around for a while, right? But like all of these, what was I reading about the other day? Um, do you guys know that there's a thing called Whopper coin? And it's apparently issued by, um, apparently, I don't know, this is not like verified information, but there's like apparently issued by Burger King Russia, um, where, yeah, you can, I not tested, not verified, but you can apparently, you know, walk into a Burger King in Russia and like get a meal and then you get some Whopper coins and then potentially trade them or use them. I know that's not what you were asking, but, but this is like, I think an example of, all sorts of like weird things happening right now in that space and and everyone else is like and we're just trying to catch up with it right so personally i stay away from it because i'm not trying to monetize i'm just like you know i'm just doing my thing you know i'm using my prepaid credit cards like i'm using you know i'm using my bank account but i think that the, i think the opportunities are there the opportunities are in these there's there's a whole lot of products and ideas that are being um that are being promoted and marketed right now and um, some of them are very good and interesting and are going to support the technology. And some of them are just there to, to make money and cash out. I personally don't know the difference. My, like, my judgment so far of ICOs, and I've, I've invested in a couple and I'm looking at a couple others, um, is like in all seriousness, the quality of their website and to see like how much research and work has been done into sharing information with the user, how non-theoretical the information is and whether or not they actually have a product that's working. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that are sold as ideas, which I think for someone in marketing space, that's the space you probably want to be in with like figuring out how do you sell that idea that no one invested in, you know, that's, that's, like just from nothing and just get people to invest in you. I see it as a little bit of dirty play, but that's marketing always. And I'm in marketing also. So, <laughs> but hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Okay. Thank you. Hi, 
I just wonder how, uh, which countries we've been to and how hard or easy it was to use cryptocurrencies in those places? Um, so far, i uh, found Czech Republic to be the easiest because this is like literally the first place where I came in and there's like this neighborhood in particular, this like this location because I'm, I'm paying rent for my uh, workspace directly in Bitcoin. I buy my drinks and sometimes food. I wish they served more food. You guys, please serve more food um, <laughs> downstairs so I, can, so I can pay for more things in Bitcoin uh, right here. Around the corner, there's Alsa. I know there's been a talk. I wish I was here, but it was in Czech. Last week, there was a talk, um, I think, about uh, how Alsa... Am I saying it right? Is it Alsa? Um, implemented Bitcoin in their payment system. I gotta tell you guys, it didn't work for me, but it was it was fun to try. Um, and um, where else have I been? It's it's not it's actually not a challenge anywhere if you're just using the prepaid card. Specifically with prepaid cards, um, certain websites for some reason block them. I think they're being blocked because they're being issued by a third party issuer and I haven't been able to kind of find the sort of the logic behind it. Um, so s occasionally I would try to pay online and it would tell me that it's just that the transaction declined. And because I'm using a third party issuer card, it's actually really hard to then resolve because I'm, you know, contacting the merchant and being like, can you tell me the code? Because I know there should be like, you know, like a failure code at the other end. And they're like, you know, just generally declined. And then I go back to my issuer and say, do you know why that transaction would decline? And they were like, that transaction never happened. So we don't know. Uh, but because I use different cards from, from a few different systems, eventually, like, I find a way to purchase something. But it's definitely, like, it's not smooth. Uh, but it's not bad either. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, by holding, like, the value keeps going, so I'm sticking to the value, and I'm sticking to just having one currency that I can sort of have on me and not in a bank. Oh, you wanted to know which countries I've been? It's just a really long list. <laughs> But I've mainly been in Europe. I haven't tried it in the U.S. yet, um, other than online. Um, yeah, that's, that's generally UK and, um, and EU, mostly. Uh, Hi look, there. Uh, I wanted to ask a question about what about local laws that can prevent you from buying the currency? I have personal experience. I wanted to uh, mm -hmm. uh, transfer my funds to uh, a, a certain hub where I can acquire Bitcoin. Uh -huh. But... Um, when I tried to transfer through SEPA, which is like European transfer, they denied it three times. And I asked, like, why? Until I actually went to the bank, it was Unicredit, and they told me that they actually have uh, a law against it. Like, I can even tell you, for X day, X amount, we, like, just think the transaction was canceled due to our conditions of a virtual currency deal. And if you search online, suppose there's even a, a law for Czech Republic prohibiting it. I don't know if we can even transfer directly as a, from a Czech bound from a Czech bank into a, let's say, BitHub or something else, it doesn't matter what, Get, GitHub. But I don't know if you know about this, but is this some, do you see this as something that's gonna happen in other places? And I see that there's other options, for example, uh, local coins, but you have to find the person who's always a local commission. There's also the ATMs that also mm -hmm. take uh, partially, because you have to put the cash and they, it's even written. You're being charged a certain amount per right. your whole transaction. So. Um, okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> let me break that down. So, um, personally, I haven't bought Bitcoin in a very long time because I just get paid in Bitcoin and I, I don't have that, you know, back and forth between fiat because I just, I gave up fiat, fiat completely. What I do on a regular basis is I buy fiat so I can pay with fiat where they don't accept Bitcoin, right? So I don't have personal experience with these limitations. I'm aware of them. Um, I, I don't know. I think that really sucks. I totally, I totally see where you are. I'm not familiar with the regulations. And I think if I had to make a guess, I would say like if one bank doesn't accept it, there would be like another that does probably. But I don't have like, I don't have a straightforward answer for you, unfortunately, unless someone here does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As, as for the Czech Republic, there are no laws prohibiting mm -hmm. uh, uh, transferring to uh, your funds to exchanges and so on. But uh, some banks are 
acting per, uh, in advance because they don't know the source of the of your bitcoins. Mm -hmm. It might be terrorism or child porn, you know. So you're and, not. And uh, uh, they don't want to uh, get into into this because of small number of customers. So until it is big or uh, there is a law that. Uh, you follow this, this, and this, and then it's okay. I think there will be some banks which will uh, deny this transaction and say that uh, for whatever whatever reason. So just to understand clearly, like the difficulty is to send money from your bank account to an exchange. Yeah. Okay. Maybe right. Uh, of maybe, course. Maybe so I just can get it to an exchange. Yeah, maybe please. I can That's try interesting. Answer the the question basically, if there is no law, you can file. Uh, you can file. Oh, sorry. You can file the case. And uh, then, if it's an internal policy or regulation, the bank shouldn't uh, basically block your, block your transaction. I had this kind of issue with one of the banks. They informed me that uh, they want to block my transaction, but then I asked why. Uh, they couldn't tell me why because it's like, a, you know, it's like an exchange and you cannot, uh, it's risky. And that's why they wanted to block it. But I, uh, I told them that I want to proceed with the transaction then transacted it, it was a separate transfer, so it worked. And you can try, for example, I don't know, Raiffeisen Bank, because they have Euro account, so you won't lose on the uh, exchange rate as well. Just an example. Thank you, it's good to know. But I think if you don't exchange like millions in crowns, uh, you can use like local bitcoins. Uh, did you yourself local, you, do you use local Bitcoin? I've, I haven't used local Bitcoins. I checked a bit local Bitcoins out um, at one point because I had money stuck um, on PayPal that I really wanted to just get the hell out of, it, up, out of uh, PayPal. And I found that there weren't rates that I would accept because the rates there were just unacceptable to me and unfair. Um, it, like, personally, I don't know, I, I, didn't like, I didn't like the way it was presented, I didn't like, like, it wasn't, it didn't feel like a fair transaction to me. So I haven't tried that site. And also, I mean, how would you get, I mean, I guess you would have the same problem if your bank wouldn't send, um, if, if your bank doesn't allow you to send your money to a party that deals with Bitcoin, they wouldn't allow you to send money to uh, local yeah, yeah, Bitcoins. But, but you can uh, transact in cash. In ca okay. Yeah, you just Got take it. the cash out of uh, the bank account and do, then you meet the person. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, in the beginnings, it, were, uh, it was uh, one of the way to meet uh, like-minded people. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, there were like See, big, like... <laughs> big guys dealers who, who, who did it just for just for to meet other people, but okay. then it, the business came very big and their accounts were frozen. So we, 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 we had a meet up uh, with uh, one of the uh, guys, so, but now they, they don't do it because they have other, other job. Wow, yeah. listening to this, I mean, it really, it feels a little bit, you know, like I'm coming from some kind of like a uh, very lucky bubble that I didn't have to experience any of that I, and I didn't realize so my one meeting, my one interaction with, uh, that was negative about Bitcoin was specifically with that client that, that was very, very strict in responding to me and saying like, there's no chance in hell we're going to deal with Bitcoin. You can't ask this from us. We don't want to trace back to us. And um, they did everything but fire me because they wanted, to work, they wanted to work with me, but they would not even like talk about Bitcoin ever. Like it was quite an aggressive reaction. And, and I guess, and something in what you're describing is also like, there's like, there's like a feel of criminality around it. You know, like you got to meet on a website, you got to meet in person, like it's in the dark. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm just really hopeful that it'll, you know, that you can do things like, uh, like you suggested, to just you know talk to your bank and insist and just saying like hey guys it's my money I want to send it there give me a break and maybe I don't know uh, uh, there's probably communities out there that do that for each other as well kind of tr like trade information about which banks are friendlier and which which are less I well, suppose th I've... this changes a lot yeah because, uh, several a uh, few months they are okay with it and then they are uh, making problems so you you never know with the banks. Yeah, it's like a part of me wants to say, you know, if there if there's a pushback, that means they're threatened. 
So, and like, in a way that sounds good to me because if they're threatened, that means that we're, we're, we're successful, that the movement is getting stronger. And on the other hand, it's like, oh, fuck. Now we're not going unnoticed anymore. Now they're noticing us. Now they're starting to push back. What are we going to do now? But I don't know. I mean, I think it's like, I don't know. It's an interesting time. Uh, I, think, I think there's solutions. There, there might be like annoying solutions and maybe they're not worthwhile for someone who just wants to kind of buy 0.05 Bitcoin just to play with it, you know, and it's not worth it to like telephones to the bank and getting your account flagged or whatever, you know, the, the precautions that, that the threat is. But I, I guess if you want to, if you want to go all in, it's worth, worth the phone call, worth the investigation. Uh, yeah, general safety rule that if you want to be, uh, if you don't want to be uh, caught uh, on guard, just to keep most of your cryptocurrencies in your wallet uh, right. uh, uh, to which you have uh, the private keys. If you keep yes. it with third party on exchange or uh, in some card, uh, you can uh, lose it in, in a second. Right. Well, uh, I, haven't, I haven't addressed that at all because my, sort of my assumption is that if you're, if you're taking control of your finances and if you're you know, making that choice, Sorry, wasn't interesting enough, guys. <laughs> um, just like shaming people that leave. <laughs> This is your future if you try to do that. Um, I lost my trail of thought. Uh, <laughs> How do you secure your bitcoins? Do you leave them on exchange? Right. Uh, so yeah, I didn't address that because I think that if you if you really take that leap and understand and, and like make a choice of I'm not going to think of Bitcoin as a commodity that I'm just going to buy and sell, but rather I'm going to use it as a currency and I'm going to liberate myself from banks and I'm going to you know kind of take responsibility for my financial situation, then it's really important to educate yourself and understand you know that it's not there's no There's no customer support for Bitcoin, you know, it's like, it's your, it's, it's under your control. So yes, you need to understand what private keys mean, uh, what the different wallets are, what the different ledgers are, uh, what are the different options of holding Bitcoin, transacting in Bitcoin, absolutely, because, yeah. And what type of wallets uh, you use? Do you use like uh, wallets on smartphone or uh, hardware wallets? Uh, I have a little bit of everything. So, um, so I have like I have a wallet on my phone that has. Um, you're good. Yeah, there is. A oh, okay. But, but you, <laughs> I have uh, I have a wallet on my phone where I keep a relatively uh, minimal amount um, for just day-to-day -day transactions and just stuff that I do online and like barcodes that I need to scan. Um, I uh, I recently purchased a hardware wallet, but I haven't used it yet because it's waiting for me at a different address. Life of a nomad. <laughs> miscalculated um, and uh, yes I use uh, browser wallets and just two different phone wallets so a little bit of everything I've recently heard that you can do just like manage your own ledger and it just sounded really cool but I I'm not technical enough to figure that out manager manage your own like so have like have access to your own ledger and just have like with your private keys have like transact without a wallet or without an application And so, yeah, like conceptually that exists and that blew my mind, but that sounds super technical, but, and I'm kind of scared of it, but I'm going to look into it probably in the near future. Okay. And don't yeah. you have a problem when you have a lot of these solutions that sometimes you forget where are, where is your ether and where is your Bitcoin and Zcash? It's, sometimes I have this problem. So it's very, very uh, hard to, to collect everything once a time. So it's a forgetting cool. passwords. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool problem uh, yeah, to yeah, have. Yeah. No, no, I totally have it. I, uh, I forgot, like, I completely forgot I have, like, first of all, I forgot that I had a, um, a, a My Ether wallet on, on another browser. So I had, like, I knew that I had one, but I didn't know that I had the other. And then... First of all, there was one Ether on it, which was awesome, because this was at a point where it was like, now it's much higher. It's like $360 today, but it was like around $300 at the time, and I was like, oh, yay, Ether. And I decided to use that. I don't know why, uh, but I decided to use that wallet um, to participate in an ICO one night last week, and then I realized that I don't know the password. And so I had this like... 
I had this terrible moment where it was like, if there was someone who was like key logging my computer, they would have had a field trip because I was entering every single password that I've ever used in that damn thing until I remember the right one. Yes, I have that problem. I haven't solved it because the only way to solve it is, you know, you centralize it into like a one database that has like all your wallets and all your information, but I don't like the idea of that. So it's kind of, I'm keeping it in my brain. Does anybody here have a better solution? <laughs> you can use paper or a password manager, and, and uh, there is a lot of options. Each of them has some positives and negatives. Hello, I've Hello. got a question about that. Uh, you get paid in Bitcoin, so how you handle with an income tax? I don't pay taxes. You, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's no... I, you're right. Like I have no, I have no papers. Like I have nothing that matches any type of form that any tax agency would. I, like I don't have a bank account. I don't have like. Pay, like <laughs> I'm not on any. Probably now I am, uh, but so far I haven't been on any type of radar or any or important enough to any tax authority to look into me and be like, "What you doing, girl?" I don't know. He has another question. Uh, as an, you're a Czech citizen, or where? So if you live somewhere, uh, you need to pay an insurance, or like social ins insurance, or. Unfortunately, because I just answered your previous question, I prefer to not answer this question. <laughs> but we can have that conversation maybe later, off you know, off record. <laughs> So anybody else want you to made ask your own something bed, about <laughs> taxes or social security? Yeah, but you, you said you invoice your customers. So to invoice your customers, you do need to have a kind of trade license or something for them to accept invoices from you. Uh, so how do you get around producing invoices but not paying the taxes on the invoices you produce? So I, um, I use platforms that produce invoices. I go in, I write down my name and my email and um, the date and how much they owe me and I send it to them and the rest is up to them. So like basically, okay, so the exposure here unfortunately is of my client, not of mine because it's sort of their duty to do the due diligence that they're working with someone who is licensed. Um, so if they're... I guess the risk here is that if someone gets audited after paying my invoices, someone was, is going to want to track back and look how and look into me and how I pay my taxes. Yeah. Thanks. No, I mean, there's. <laughs> so I've been trying to do that trick for a while, and I couldn't find a solution myself. So I say, it's maybe, like, maybe you know. Um, I mean, the general, uh, the, my general attitude towards it is that I'm, indep I'm, a, I'm an independent contractor, and. You know, it's like I can be, I can be transparent if, if another agency wants to know why I invoice them and for what, but I just haven't had an opportunity and I haven't dealt with that, you know. It helps that the invoices are not really big either. Like I'm not, you know, we're not talking millions. Yeah, I think it is better when you are citizen of uh, some foreign state mm -hmm. uh, that you just give them some invoice that they don't yeah. understand and uh, they just put it into accounting and cl close their eyes. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm transparent with because, my clients. Yeah. They know what's on the other end of it. But yes, yeah. the invoice that they receive is printed. Like it, it's, it's a dollar or euro or British pound invoice that's printable in their currency, which they, they can then match to their books. Again, like my recommendations to my client is like buy the Bitcoin on the same day, buy it in the, for the same mm -hmm. amount so you can match that. And that's enough for your books because that's the same transaction. But but as an invoice, it's a dollar invoice or, or a euro invoice as any other. Yeah. Another it's not perfect, but you know. It's, any it's other question? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Um, currently, still, unfortunately, the most typical Bitcoin user is someone who sends their fiat money to an exchange, buys bitcoins, and leaves it there. So they like <laughs> yeah. never do a single Bitcoin transaction. 
That doesn't even take it to their wallet. Yeah. Oh. Uh, or maybe they make like one or two transactions. So I kind of have a hard time explaining to them why high transaction fees and unreliable confirmation times are a problem. Uh, I guess it's much different for you uh, since you send transactions daily, right? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat Th the... Do the high transaction fees and long confirmation times uh, affect your uh, daily Bitcoin spending somehow, or do you not perceive this as, as a problem? I don't perceive it as a problem mostly uh, because I'm, I still don't really use Bitcoin, you know, on like on a high volume, on any high volume situation, you know, like I don't, except for you know paying downstairs for for coffee. I would usually, I still. Um, transacting Bitcoin in the form of I pre-fund the credit cards that I use and I pre-fund the bank transactions so I don't meet that that often. That being said, I think um, quite a few POS and other merchant systems do um, know how to recognize a transaction after usually three confirmations so you don't actually so there's like there's uh, the process of validation is not you know they're not actually waiting for the whole transaction to complete to recognize it as a, as a payment. But yeah, no, I have, um, I have the same issue uh, with people because there's no, there's no convincing, there's no convincing anyone until you, until you just like let them use it a little bit or just like see the value rise. And I don't know, like to make, to make that leap of saying like, I'm going to use it as currency. Um, I think there's going to be the more systems there are like, like systems that I use, like the, the prepaid cards and the bank transactions, is going to be kind of more users adapting it. But these are not quite ready for it yet, probably. We're still kind of in that space. Uh, so basically, you use uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like reserve currency, like gold, uh, that you... Yeah, uh, kind of, yeah, trickle out You to, hold, and when yeah. you need to use, you just... Uh, cut little uh, sm small portion. Yeah, like a scrape uh, a little bit of gold. Exchange it to local currency and then uh, live uh, on it for a while. I kind of do. Yeah. I wish it was smoother. I'm waiting for the time that it's smoother. But so far, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I really uh, like that uh, the thing you said uh, in the beginning that uh, the currency is easiest way to save. Mm -hmm. uh, which is actually not uh, true with fiat currencies, which is depreciating uh, during the time. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin gave this reserve, uh, reserve nature back uh, to the to the currency, mm -hmm. so people don't have to flee to houses and other other uh, like uh, stocks, and uh, the bubbles don't form. So uh, this is other uh, good uh, like feature of Bitcoin that it's real reserve currency mm -hmm. you know to me it's like i don't know because I, I changed so many currencies that i've used throughout my life and i never took any specific currency as like a my home currency or, or like any specific currency too seriously so to me this is just another it's just another switch you know because like i i was living in one country and i was using their currency and their currency and you know it's like you know if you're from czech republic and you meet someone else and they tell you like oh, you use czech crowns how's that you know, like, tell me about check rounds. It's like, you know, it's, 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 another, it's just the currency that I choose that I, that I felt is the most useful for me that, that works with my lifestyle that, I don't know, to me it's the same risk and a much greater reward than holding on to fiat. And in all honesty, it makes it easier for me when I travel and in terms of like exchanges and, um, and transactions. Well, good thing about Czech Republic is that uh, we have central bank too. Uh, which is quite friendly to cryptocurrencies. And recently they published uh, an article on their website uh, saying that uh, they don't think that Bitcoin is threat uh, to central banking, which is good, which is nice. very good. <laughs> and uh, let them think that for like 10 years and everything will be okay. Yeah. I think you're awesome, first of all. It's Aww. awesome. It's awesome that you're like one of the pioneers to use this over the last couple of years. I think you're awesome for calling me awesome and a pioneer in one sentence. Well, I want to ask you over the last couple of years. Yeah, go and give her a round of applause because she definitely <laughs> deserves it, or not? I didn't hear you. No, yeah, it's okay. round of applause for the lady. <laughs> <laughs> now you said over the last uh, two years you've been pretty much using cryptocurrencies 
on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. How, uh, compared to two years ago, how much easier has it become compared to two years ago to today? And also, what's your um, personal belief on, on where's Bitcoin going to go? How big is it going to get? Oh, big question. Um... So I think you're awesome too, and uh, it's been ge- it has been getting easier. It has been, it's been getting easier because um, there's more and more people jumping on board. Not so much with Bitcoin, but like but the different things that are happening on Ethereum platform specifically, and just in cryptocurrency world, has been kind of bringing uh, bringing kind of to the more popular culture attention the possibilities. And it's uh, I like that the stigma is slowly going away. So mostly, mostly in that sense, because the, uh, the prepaid cards were there. They're still a pain in the ass to use. They're not the best thing. They're still developing. I think it's going to be easier in a few months because we're, we're really getting closer to like a, a smoother operation there. Um, I think, I don't know. I have all sorts of speculation about the future because like I, do, I, I really don't know if we're actually going to break that, um, that space of Bitcoin becoming like a full-fledged currency and not stick as a commodity. I think there is a cryptocurrency that will replace fiat um, or how do I say it Uh, more specifically? I think there will be something that's working on the blockchain that is going to very, very seriously challenge the way we think about money and currency and exchange. And I think that's that's happening. Uh, Speculation about price? No idea because so many things are changing every day. So I wouldn't Right now, Bitcoin is kind of, you know, has like the stamp of approval and it's like easier to transact for me, but I'm always on a lookout and kind of looking at what else is happening. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yep. yep. Awesome. What's your, I mean, what are your thoughts? What do you think? I don't know. It's changing. It's just a, a week in crypto land is like 10 years. It's crazy. I know. There's yeah. so much information. I'm reading up on Reddit. I'm trying to diversify my own little portfolio and... And uh, yeah, and August was insane. It was just insane. September's going to be even probably even more crazy. But exactly, I think it's just going to keep getting crazier. I think we're going to go through another crash at some point because there is a lot of hype and it, it is trending right now. And I think probably after like this coming whatever, whenever that's going to come, there's going to be like an interesting restructuring and like an, something interesting is going to emerge after that. And I'm really looking forward to see what it is. Monero is an interesting one if you're looking to have the. Anonymity of transactions as well. Right. Really... Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, cryptocurrencies in general are in exponential growth, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been following Bitcoin since 2011, and we are still on that uh, exponential uh, line in a logarithmic graph. So uh, we don't know which. Uh, uh, currency, if Bitcoin or Ether will be the winner, maybe there will be more winners, mm-hmm. but definitely uh, it's a space that will expand. It's a free, yeah. freedom space that will expand uh, like internet expanded in, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago. Yeah, I think, I don't know, personally, I think uh, where, where I'm trying to kind of push the boundaries when I talk to people is really this kind of, and I've mentioned this a few times today, sorry to he- for you to hear that again, but it's like it's that understanding that like your fiat money isn't any safer than anything else. So it's like, and kind of, you know, get financially literate, understand how the financial world works, at least on a very basic level. You don't have to be a cryptographer, you don't have to be like all that technical by the way i have no technical background um it's just like take control over your finances and like see where you want how see that you that you have control where you want to yeah yeah and uh, the most uh, new users come from uh, the countries where they have very uh, strict uh, financial uh, not freedom yeah uh, like india mm-hmm. uh, like venezuela with uh, big inflation and uh, these are all countries where uh, we see all the bad, uh, bad features of fiat currencies uh, that are centralized, can be manipulated, and so on. So, and uh, we forgot already what happened in the 50s in Czech Republic, that we have so-called monetary reform. They uh, like took f- four-fifths of your 
of your uh, money in the bank account just by uh, switching the decimal point or something oh, like wow. that. Okay. So because they can do yeah, that. Yeah, they can do that, and yeah. if people want it, uh, so uh, this will happen uh, around the world because of uh, the indebted countries and so on. So it, the situation is uh, very unstable. And, uh, of course, I have to uh, promote our Hackers' Congress, which is not about speculation, not about uh, making money, but uh, it's all about financial freedom, how cryptocurrencies and anonymi uh, anonymous cryptocurrencies can improve your uh, financial freedom and economic freedom. So uh, this is a good place to be in uh, the beginning of October. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about yeah, maybe trying to make it to Prague, back to Prague for this. So I think we're starting to lose the room. How do you guys feel? Is there any? Yeah, if there is no, is there not too no much more excitement question. to ask more if questions and talk to me some more. No more okay. question. I would like to uh, thank Gilly for a great and heartly presentation. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. I hope uh, you will go now down with us uh, to the Bitcoin coffee, have a coffee or other uh, beers and drinks yeah, for be Bitcoin or Litecoin. For sure. And uh, don't forget to support us. Uh, and I would just would like to say that uh, the next Bitcoin meetup uh, will be on, uh, I forgot, yeah, it's uh, on Tuesday from 6 p.m. And I will, be, I will have a presentation about different type of cryptocurrencies. It's like uh, uh, initial course on what uh, different uh, type of cryptocurrencies we have. So thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. And, and thank you for organizing. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>